Welcome to Men Alive, where we examine biblical principles for becoming conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Paul Estabrooks. Our teacher is my longtime friend, Dr. Jim Cunningham, a consultant in adult education and director of Go Teach Global. Jim. Thanks, Paul. From the Genesis account of the Garden of Eden through to the Revelation story of the New Jerusalem, the entire Bible was written and recorded before the discovery of electricity. No electric lights, no TVs, no computers, no videos, no phones, no Google, just oil lamps, candles, cooking fires, and daylight were used to record every word of Scripture and pass on a handwritten copy to others before the invention of the printing press. It boggles the mind. No electricity. Jesus of Nazareth was 30 years old when he launched his three-year ministry to train his disciples to go into all the world and tell the world the good news. He picked a number of disciples and said, follow me, and they did. When he had selected about 70 followers, He went up a mountain and spent the night in prayer asking his heavenly father which ones are to be his 12 apostles, selected from the 70 disciples. Both the Gospel of Matthew and Gospel of Luke record that when they came down from the mountain, the crowds gathered to hear Jesus' teaching and to be healed. And what was the first teaching Jesus gave his newly selected 12 apostles? He turned to them and said, Blessed are you when people hate you, and exclude you, and insult you, and reject you, for my name's sake. When that happens, leap for joy, rejoice, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets the same way. I remember when we compiled the Standing Strong Through the Storm text, we created the air chart, H-E-I-R. In the remainder of Luke chapter 6, Jesus tells his disciples how to respond to persecution. He says, If they hate you, then love your enemies. If they strike you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek to them. Love them and do not judge them for hating you. If they exclude you, do good to them. And if they take your cloak, offer your tunic. Do good to them. Do not condemn them for excluding you. If they insult you, bless them. If they ask for something, give it to them, expecting nothing in return, and forgive them for insulting you. And if they reject you, pray for those who despitefully use you. If they ask you to lend to them, do not ask for it back. Give to the one who rejects you. As I remember, our H-E-I-R acronym only worked in the New International Version of the Bible. Hate, exclude, insult, Reject. But it fits nicely with Romans 8.17, where the Apostle Paul said, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs heirs of God, and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. That's the key. We become co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings. Jesus picked 12 disciples to train to reach a world that in A.D. 33 had a population of some 225 million people according to the United Nations researchers. And somebody gets paid at the UN to figure these numbers out. 225 million people. So if Jesus was choosing an equivalent number today to reach our current world population of over 7.5 billion people, how many disciples would he choose today? 400. I've heard you tell this story before. 400 is correct. In Matthew 28, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you. 
and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Okay, Jim, to prove I'm listening carefully, you misquoted that last verse. That's right. I left out two important words. Scripture does not say teaching them everything I have commanded you, but rather it's teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. For these 400 disciples to be equal to the first 12 apostles, they must have four similarities. They must believe Jesus is the Son of God, Emmanuel, God in the flesh. Second, they must believe that Jesus was crucified as the Passover lamb rose from the dead and is alive today. Third, they must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And one more, they must be willing to die. In Revelation 12:11, it says, They triumphed over him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, the death of Jesus, and by their testimony, their witness. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Before you continue, Jim, let me remind our listeners that this is Men Alive with Dr. Jim Cunningham from Go Teach Global. At the end of the program, we'll share how and where you can ask your questions to Dr. Jim. The reality is that we have only one enemy, our adversary Satan, or the devil, called Lucifer, who was cast out of heaven for his pride-filled attempt to overthrow God and rule heaven. He is not equal to God and not equal to Jesus Christ. Satan is our pursuer the one who sees Jesus Christ in us and seeks to stop us from serving him or even speaking about him. Satan used five groups to pursue Jesus, and he uses the same five groups today to pursue Christians. In English, each group starts with the letter R. The first R is government rulers. From the moment Jesus was born, King Herod tried to kill him. King Herod sent the wise men to Bethlehem to find the baby Messiah, saying that he wanted to come and worship him. That was a lie. When the wise men did not return, Herod was so angry, he ordered all the baby boys in Bethlehem, two years old and under, to be killed. Joseph and Mary escaped with Jesus to Egypt until Herod died. But Jesus was pursued and persecuted by the government authorities right up to and including Herod's son Archelaus, and the Roman governor called Pontius Pilate, who ordered his crucifixion. The second R were the religious leaders. Almost from the moment Jesus began his ministry to the day of his resurrection from the dead, he was pursued and persecuted by the scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, who hated him and orchestrated his crucifixion. Saul of Tarsus was a sample of the hatred the religious leaders had for Christ's followers as he watched them stone Stephen to death for believing Jesus was alive. The third R were Christ's own relatives. Jesus had a number of half-brothers and sisters. They mocked him and did not believe he was the Messiah until after he rose from the dead. One half-brother, James, went on to write the book of James after he became a follower of Jesus. The fourth R, we could call the rich guys. For example, Jesus cast demons out of a man, and the demons asked to go into a herd of pigs. Then the pigs, 2,000 of them, go rushing over a cliff and drown in the lake. Result? The people and the owners of the pigs, seeing their income, ended, demanded that Jesus leave their region. And the fifth R we will call rowdies. On more than one occasion, mobs incited by some of the individuals above tried to kill Jesus. In Nazareth, they tried to push Jesus over a cliff. And finally, at his trial, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And the authorities did. We, you and I as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, are being pursued or persecuted by the same five sources of persecution. Rulers, religious leaders, relatives, rich guys, and rowdies. Same enemy, Satan, who uses the same five sources to pursue us today. Jesus picked his 12 apostles 
to be his witnesses to everything they saw him do and hear him say for three years. In Greek, the word for witness is martis. So Jesus is saying, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Scripture says that after Jesus rose from the dead, he was seen by 500 witnesses or martyrs. As they died, the word became associated in English with people who lost their life for their faith in Christ, a martyr. To help our listeners remember the teachings Jesus gave his disciples, here are the key points using the word martyr as an acronym. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ today and you believe Jesus is the Son of God, Passover lamb who died for your sins and rose from the dead and is alive forevermore, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit— then according to Matthew chapter 10, you will be mistreated or harassed, verse 14. You will be alienated or rejected, verse 14. You will be restricted or detained, verse 17 and 19. You will be traumatized or abused, verse 17. You will run and be pursued, verse 25. And you will rest in peace because you are going to to die, verse 28. The good news, you and I will be witnesses to the salvation that is found in Jesus Christ. The bad news, it may cost us our life. In Luke 21, 12 to 19, Jesus warned his disciples that this would happen, so he prepared them by saying, but before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name. And so you will bear testimony to me. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourselves. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm, and you will win life. It's like we heard from a pastor when we were teaching in Central Asia. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I remember, and then he added, once we lose our fear of dying, we gain our love and joy for living. We are unstoppable as Christ's disciples until he chooses to call us home to heaven. There you have it, men. Keep going. We are unstoppable as Christ's disciples until he calls us home. For a printed copy of this program's teaching, or with any questions you may have, contact Dr. Jim by sending your email to menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. Men Alive is a production of Go Teach Global. For more information, go to our website at www.goteachglobal.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Paul Estabrooks. On behalf of Dr. Jim Cunningham, encouraging you to be men alive, conform to the image of Jesus Christ.